nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Banks do not do what you think they do. Governments don't operate anywhere near the way you think they do. And that's why today when you look at what's going on in the world today, it seems very destructive. But actually, in point of fact, you don't know how the system works. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And so it's working perfectly fine. all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. People will be forced to take the mark of the beast. So many Christians will take the mark of the beast. Because many of them are thinking that it's harmless. Secondly, many are going to think that my spirit is willing but my flesh is weak and God will understand. Sadly, God will not understand. Because we have been warned not to take the mark of the beast. The word is clear, we can't yes. take it. Right. Unless we want to go to hell. Not only he says not to take the mark, he also says all those who take the mark will be doomed forever. And no mercy will be shown, no more <laughs> grace for them. But he's, it, he is, it, is, it is so clear that the Bible says we cannot eat I don't, I don't know if drink is in there too. I think it's drink. Mm -hmm. you, you can't, they won't give you any food. Literally, when trouble comes, the government's already planned it. They're going to take the food, as they do always, from the rich and give to the poor, or for people who have food, and then distribute it around until everybody's starving to death. The MP bomb, which we have the man who's ahead of the commission, was here on our last shows, Peter Pratt. And he's just telling us. That this is a, 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 the most serious calamity facing America. If the EMP, which Korea has, goes off tomorrow over our country, immediately all cars stop, all trucks stop, all food stops, all water stops, every pump stops running, every car stops running. And... In one year, 90% of America will be dead, according to the experts. We interrupt our programming. This is a national emergency. Important details will follow. The emergency alert system has been activated.
my brethren, be strong in the Most High, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yah, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Most High Yah. the Most High Yah, we welcome you to another Sword of the Spirit audio broadcast teaching. Um, we are your hosts, the Service of Yah. Today's teaching is a special teaching. Um, we um, are calling it our special edition teaching because it's going to be a little bit different than what um, you're normally used to hearing. Um, we normally choose these times as unctioned by the Set of Our Spirit of Yah and um, our special edition teachings, for those of you who have been listening for a while, we normally do those when there is an urgent message. Not at, not to say that uh, any of the teachings that we bring forth are not urgent, but when uh, we're being led of the Spirit to bring forth a warning, um, something that the body of our Messiah needs to pay attention to, and in light of uh, what has been happening with this shutdown, Um, We are having a special edition teaching. Um, And so I'm going to read uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 17 through 19. It says, And Yah said to me, They have spoken well what they have said. I shall raise up a prophet to them from among their brothers, one like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be whoever will not listen to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it at his hand. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring in my um, co-teacher. Welcome to today's 174th uh, special edition teaching. Shabbat Shalom, sis. How are you? Shabbat Shalom, sis. I'm well. It looks nice and bright outside, even though I know it's cold. Oh, yes, it's freezing. (laughs) But, But, you know, um, we didn't get as much snow as they um, said that we were. So it's kind of, you know, we had the freezing rain um, one day this week when I was going to work out. I didn't know that I was going to be sliding all the way there. The uh, rain, it was freezing rain. So as soon as the rain hit my window shield, it just was, it froze up like on the spot. And so. Wow. um, Yeah. Yeah, so just glad that uh, we were able to see another week. This was uh, a very uh, restful week. I've been, you know, I uh, was telling Prina I have, you know, gone back and have committed myself to getting in shape and um, for just so that I'm able to be healthy. And so I, you know, I'm back, you know. Uh, Joined a club, and I'm doing kickboxing. I'm doing all kind of stuff. And so I'm having a a good time, um, you know, getting myself. I can already tell that I'm losing inches around my waist and and everything. So I'm excited because I was telling Prina I feel better than I felt in years. I seem to have more energy. I'm sleeping better. Um, I'm not waking up numerous times all throughout the night like like I normally do. And so... You know, I'm looking forward and um, to what this journey is going to bring, and um, and I, I plan on being ready, uh, y'all willing, for summer. And yes. So um, how are you doing today, though, other than that? I'm doing great. I can't, you know, can't complain. Um, I was able to see 
um, another Sabbath, so that's a blessing in itself. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, I'm just uh, just ex- just excited to be here, you know, because a lot of people are going and and um, mm-hmm. and so I'm just glad that y'all show favor to allow me to be here another day. And so praise be to y'all. Praise be to y'all. So we're going to go ahead and get started with today's 174th audio broadcast special edition. Um, It's teaching slash discussion. It's going to be a a teaching, but also, you know, Prina and I are working together with this. Um, It's entitled, just in light of everything that's been going on, um, it's entitled, The Shaking Has Begun, Endure. Okay, and so we know that right now we're living in alarming uh, times right now, um, just in in light of what is going on in the world. Uh, We know that this nation leads the world in pornography. Um, We lead the world in the distribution of filth on every facet, no matter if it's the television, no matter if it's the music, no matter... You know, they're trying to bring it into the schools. I mean, we just lead the the world in the distribution of sexual perversion and filth. Uh, we lead the world in the killing of unborn babies with abortion. And we And we continue to do this with no end in sight, okay? They even recently just uh, passed something in Congress now that you can abort a baby all the way up until birth. All the way up until the it is time for the baby to be born now you can and and this and, and this will be considered murder is this not murder? yeah, you know what I'm saying why because it's still in the the mom the mother's belly in the womb, so it's okay for you to kill it I mean again, this nation leads the world in Every lawness, every bit of lawness that the scripture speaks of, and so it should be expected that our Abba Yah would visit a nation such as this. And so, you know, the the lawless, they're on the rise. The proud, they're on the rise. The bolsters, the scorners and mockers, they're on the rise, and they despise those that are good in the, in the eyes of the scriptures. Now, the Bible is proving us. All you have to do, if you read the Bible, and all you need to do is just, I don't even say, I won't even say you have to leave your house. You can just look out the window. You you don't have to leave your house. Look at the, listen, turn on your radio. Yeah. Turn on the tube. You can't find any wholesome, any pure, righteous music, No nothing on top. You don't even have to leave the house. Okay? Just. Everything that's going right now, the, the Bible has proven that we are living in the age that will precede his return, okay? And so as the nation appears to be shaken, everyone is shaken by this government shutdown. Everyone is, you know, from the HUD housing to people worried about the social security to people worried about getting their tax refund to people, you know, worried about um, getting their uh the Department of Human Services, getting their food stamps, SNAP, whatever they're calling it. You know, there's a lot of agencies that are being uh, affected by this, and Prina is going to talk about this later. We're not going to spend a lot of time because we're, we have a message today. But she's going to briefly come and just, you know, tell us about this, you know, who's what agencies are being affected and what they're responsible for. But it appears, you know, as if, you know, we have, like, uh, many of the TSA workers at the airport, many of them are uh, working on furlough. You know, they're working, they're not getting any, yeah, you know, funding. So it, it appears that we were headed towards an economic collapse, okay? The families, um, were, you know, the livelihood of many, you know, were, were being threatened as of, you know, they just ended it temporarily, but... The focus that we're going to bring today is what should be the primary focus of the remnant of Yah. What, what is it that we should be focusing on, okay? And the, the prophet Haggai, he was given a very urgent message. And I want to show you today, because I didn't realize it until the Son of the Spirit gave me this, that, there, that this message, 
The message that was given to the prophet Haggai is directly connected to the prayer of our master Yeshua in the Garden of Gethsemane as it pertains to what is expected of us in this time when we're going through, okay? And so what can we learn from this connection? We're going to talk about it. We're going to identify it. We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to show you what it, what is it that you should learn from this connection, you know, that will help the sons of Jacob, Israel, to prepare in these end times, to help the body of our Messiah. Okay, we're going to show you how just understanding the message that was given to Haggai and also the prayer, Gethsemane, we're going to revisit that, how these two connect and how they this connection can prepare the end time body of our Messiah and the remnant, okay, the chosen, how to prepare for these perilous times that are ahead because they are here, okay? And so today we're going to, you know, bring forth a very urgent a very special edition teaching, and we pray that by the end of today's special edition teaching that we will not only bring encouragement, but uh, we but also clarity and also um, instill a willingness to endure. And so just before we get started, last week, if you missed our 173rd audio broadcast teaching, it was entitled Sexual Immorality. I don't have to go into a whole spiel about this, okay? We already know this is wrong. We know that 1 Corinthians 6 and 18 tells us that fornication is sinning against your own body. We also reveal the true and spiritual purpose of what so many call the hymen, okay? What is the truth about hymen that has led the world to the idolatry that we see in today's culture, okay? The scripture doesn't call it a hymen, okay? It's a covering. Um we also expose a tactic um, through this lesson that the enemy uses to draw men into lust and spiritual sin, especially those who are married, okay? If you are married or desiring to be married, um, you're going to learn the truth about the marriage bed being defiled. There are acts that are going on in the bedroom between married couples, okay, that is defiling the bed and that if it is not repented of, um, and once you know this, okay, that can mean life or death for you, okay? This is something Israel was doing, and they were attempting Messiah, and uh, an entire nation, okay, and city was destroyed because of this. So please go back and check out our 173rd audio broadcast, Teaching Sexual Immorality, and so... We're going to listen to an audio clip. Prina, I'm going to uh, start with my teaching, and then I will bring you in okay. when I'm ready because it's not um, it's not yet. There's some things that I'm going to be going over first, okay, and um, I'll bring you in when I, when uh, we get to that portion of it. Okay. okay. So okay. we're going to listen to an audio clip, and then we will be back. And for those of you who have been, maybe been under a rock, been under a rock, <laughs> You know, did not know what was going on. We're going to play this quick audio clip, and then we will be back. The consequences of the government shutdown continue to have a rolling effect. The longer it goes on, the more government services that will be unavailable. Washington correspondent Alexandra Lamone tonight reporting that poor, elderly, and disabled may face evictions if the Department of Housing and Urban Development doesn't reopen soon. Thousands of senior citizens and disabled Americans who rely on government housing subsidies could face evictions and homelessness because of the government shutdown. The Department of Housing and Urban Development has run out of money and sent its employees home. HUD's mission includes serving some of the poorest people in America, including those who rely on monthly HUD vouchers to pay for a place to live. If HUD remains closed, can mean disaster for tenants and landlords and later on for states. Sarah Pratt is the former deputy secretary of HUD. She says because of the shutdown, more than 1,100 landlords around the country were already notified that they wouldn't get the federal government's portion of the rent they're owed. Representing close to 50,000 tenants. The longer the government shutdown continues, the larger the number of landlords who won't receive HUD vouchers. That ultimately could leave the most vulnerable Americans on the streets. 
Republican Senator John Thune. That's why there should be a sense of urgency attached to this, because there's there's no there is nothing good accomplished by a government shutdown. And this isn't simply an issue of greedy landlords. Many low income housing operations need the rent money to pay for the bills for things like electricity, gas, and water. The answer is the tenants may have to move out. And that, of course, would be a disaster. And a disaster for financially strapped states and cities left to deal with those in need. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Uh, I have an article pulled up from uh, Curbed.com. More government shutdown news, man. You know, and this, this is more bad news for those of you that, um, that trust in the shadow of Egypt, man. Okay, Donald Trump is uh, pretty much rolling out a plan where it's directly affecting uh, the poor. Okay, and predominantly the poor, uh, the poor citizens in America are you Israelites, man. Okay, so he's taking away a lot of government uh, funding, whether it's for food, um, you know, whether it's tax money or even housing. He's taking a lot of these government benefits away, um, and it's only going to get worse, man. Okay. So we're living in that time where, you know, uh, the Heavenly Father is about to start shaking a lot of things up uh, using, um, you know, the, the, the elitist and, and those that um, that forward the elitist agenda. OK, he's going to start shaking a lot of things up in the planet Earth. Uh, so this article, like I said, it speaks for itself. This is from Curb.com. It was published today, uh, January 7th, uh, the year of Karagma by Jeff Andrews and it says government shutdown could lead to millions of evictions okay and that's a that's a heavy uh, topic man millions of people being evicted um in in a, in a short time a short time span as such man this, this could definitely lead to uh all out chaos and, and, and riots if this government shutdown continues man okay people losing their houses losing food you know their well their well being you know it's about to go down, man. Okay? It says, um, funding for HUD's rental assistance program would lapse if shutdown drags on. Okay? So the funding is going to lapse. It really lapsed um, January 1st, but they're only going to be able to provide funding up until sometime in February, man. Okay? So it says, entering its third week and with no end in sight, the partial federal government shutdown is putting millions of low-income tenants who depend on funding from the Department of Housing and Urban Development um, HUD at risk, okay? So this government shutdown is, is, can potentially affect millions of families, man. You know, millions of families. A, a large portion of that, too, is, is also going to be a lot of you so-called independent uh, women, you know? Because you, tr you trust in the shadow of Egypt. You receive these government uh, benefits going on on january 4th hud sent a letter to 1500 landlords whose house tenants under various rental assistance programs including section 8 vouchers and project-based rental assistance urging them not to initiate evictions for tenants um over hud funding that has now lapsed okay so you know, it's it's going down, man. A lot of these a lot of these uh people they want their money, man. A lot of these uh businesses, you know, they want they want their money, man. And if not, they're gonna just start removing a lot of you federally funded uh people from their premises, man. If they can't get their uh their, their money, man. Okay? So this government, like I said, this government shutdown is already affecting affecting over eight hundred thousand uh government workers right now. Okay? Their bills are piling up. Okay, uh, um, you know they out of work. Okay, they they you know they um you know they losing hope in the system. Okay, and it's it's only going to get worse, man. Even if we even if Donald Trump does agree, or, or the House agrees with Donald Trump, and they do come with a proposal to get the money for the uh, uh for the wall or whatever the case may be, it's still going to get worse out here. There's still going to be other things that's going to transpire in the near future that's going to highly affect. A lot of you people, and predominantly the poor, man, the poor you Israelites, man, okay, because they've got you hooked to their poison, okay? Continuing on, according to the Washington Post, HUD officials didn't realize this funding had lapsed on January 1st, and the shutdown prevents them from renewing, renewing it, okay? So, hey, man, 
a lot of these contracts can't be renewed right now and they can't receive uh that federal uh funding okay to continue to to house these recipients man so first things first they're just gonna start uh, uh removing them man okay it's gonna start kicking them out man and what's one thing that you you could get a major response out of jake if you take food out of out of their mouth and if you take food out of their mouth or if you take um a roof from over their head man jake uh we're gonna get gonna get pissed off man and, and and it's gonna cause a straight up uproar in America if this thing uh continues on, man. Oh say okay, it says HUD officials are now tapping reserve funds and and scouring for money according to the post. So they're trying to scrape up money to continue to house these people. It says about ninety five percent of HUD's seven thousand five hundred employees have been furloughed. The remaining five percent are exempt because they respond to emergency situations that endanger life or property. Among the routine HUD functions on on pause due uh, to the shutdown are building inspections for properties that receive HUD funding. NBC highlighted the consequences of pause inspections with a report detailing how the floor collapsed under one privately owned HUD funded property in Connecticut that had been waiting for months for an inspection. So it's going to get to a point where, you know, a, a lot of these um, buildings and facilities uh that you know uh accept government funding if they run into a problem um as i said a floor floor collapse maybe something catch on fire you know they're not going to have the people in place to make the repairs to these facilities because of the shutdown man okay they're not going to have the workers the, the the federal government workers to come in and do normal maintenance and routine um within these communities man so this thing about to get ugly out here, man. Okay, and it's long overdue, man. America, America is long overdue for just some type of major inconvenience towards the people, man. The people are comfortable. They're they're uh, they're they're waxing worse. They're sinful as all hell. You know, uh, they disregard uh, the you know the the value of life. You know, they disregard you know the the value of uh, of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. They disregard your how about Shema was shy the prophets. OK, they don't eat right. They don't they don't do they just disregard, you know, uh, uh, everything, man. So they long overdue for just some type of of, uh, of you know, feather shaking, man. All right. All right. So I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. And we're going to read verses one through three. Isaiah 10, 1 through 3. Woe to those who decree decrees of injustice and writers who write toil to turn aside the poor from judgment and to steal justice from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, that they may rob orphans, and what will you do in the day of visitation and of destruction? It comes from far away. To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? And so we know that just reading this, the prophet Isaiah, anytime in the scriptures where you see woe, that is not a good thing, Okay. That's not a good thing because that means judgment, a very strict and harsh judgment is coming anytime you see woe in the scripture. It says woe to those who decree a decree of unrighteousness. And so we all know that this government shutdown is an unrighteous decree. We know that it is an unrighteous decree. But know that all of what is taking place right now, we need to understand that it's pre-planned, okay? We need to understand that because we are not only getting ready to embark upon an economic transition here, okay, but also a global transition into a new system. We're getting ready to embark upon a global transition, not just an economic one here, but a global transition, okay? And this trend, this new system 
that they're trying to transition us into is being ran by demons and wickedness in high places. That's why Ephesians 6 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That means that our conflict is not that of flesh and blood, of human. He says, but with principalities and with those in authority and with the possessors of the dark world and with evil spirits that are beneath the earth. Okay? And so we're not, what we're dealing with, we have to forget about the person, the the fleshly body, and realize what's operating on the inside. Uh, That's just a shell, okay? Just like a, a costume for what's really operating on the inside. The scriptures is clear that the conflict that we are having is not with that that is of flesh and blood. But these are those that are of the dark world. They're evil spirits that are beneath the earth. Okay? So this is spiritual. And so I say all of this to say one thing. Yah's in control. He is in control. Even though it may appear like he's not here, he is in control. Nothing happens unless he allows it. Okay? Didn't you sure he warned us? What did he say? In these times, he said that we would hear of what? Wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, famine. But then what did he follow that up with? He said that this is only the beginning of sorrows. This is only the beginning of what is getting ready to take place. Okay? But we, the people of Yah, we are to keep our eyes on him and to make sure that we're we're ready when he comes back, that we're prepared. It's time for us to buckle up, put put on our the whole armor of Yah, you know, and 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 strap down because it's it's all getting ready to go down. Okay? And what's getting ready to go down is only be, is the beginning of what is getting ready to play our people, the the sons of Jacob. Okay, and so more than anything this is not a time to get distracted. This is not a time for us to regress and and look back like Lot's wife, going back. This is not the time for you to be doing that. But this is the time for the people of y'all to reset, okay? It's time for the people of y'all to come into alignment, to come into agreement with the creator of heaven and earth. Okay, because many are being deceived into thinking that they're in covenant relationship with Yah, and they want to go around calling themselves pastors, calling themselves, you know, teachers, calling themselves leading the people in Yah, yet they're not hearing from Yah. And I'm talking about Israel right now. Okay, we we love to put on, we want to, again, we want to have the, the natural hair. We want to have our hair wraps. The men want to wear mitri. We want to have on our so-called Hebrew outfit. We want to have our tassels lengthened. We want to, you know, speak fluent Hebrew. We want to keep the Sabbath. We want to go around teaching every other nation. Okay? You want to have a congregation. You want to have people listening to you, following you. Many of you love to go around and say, y'all told me this and y'all told me that. But in fact, you don't have a prayer life. So how can we listen and follow someone who doesn't have a prayer life? And for many of you, you might know the word. You might have some word in you and know what the word says, but you lack instruction. You don't know how to move according to the spirit. We did a teaching on that a couple of weeks ago, of being led by the spirit. Go to Luke chapter 9 right quick. Go to Luke chapter 9. Because and and as we're getting ready to see, we're going to see an example of what I'm talking about. In Luke chapter 9, verse 33, we're going to see, we're going to read about Peter. Peter is giving suggestions, trying to build, you know, oh, let's do this, and, and let's do that. We we need to do this. We can build this. We can build that. Until finally he was quieted, like, shh, quiet, and listen to him, because you're not hearing from me. You're just spewing off talking, and that's not what I told you to do. 
Look at Luke chapter 9. We're going to begin reading at verse 29. And we're going to go through 35. Luke chapter 9, verses 29 through 35. And in his praying, the appearance of his face became different. So we're seeing Yeshua, our master, is praying. He's in his glorious state. He is praying and um, before the Father Yah, and so that's what's going on. And so it says in Luke nine twenty nine, and in Yeshua's praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing was dazzling white. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, appearing in glory. They spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Simon and those with him were heavy and sleep and barely awake. Pay attention. Simon and those with him were heavy with sleep and barely awake. And they saw his glory and those two men who were standing with him. And when they began to leave, Simon said to Yeshua, Teacher, it is good for us that we stay here and we make three shelters. Now, the Blue Letter Bible says that what Peter was suggesting is that we, it says that he he was suggesting to have a movable temple of Yah made after the patterns of the temple at Jerusalem. Okay, this is what the Blue Letter Bible is saying. When he says, let, we can, it's good for us to stay right here. We can make, we can make three tabernacles. I mean, we can make three temples. Some of your Bibles say shelters, three temples. He's talking about building a temple, one for him, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And the Blue Letter Bible says that this was a movable temple of Yah made after the pattern of which the temple at Jerusalem was built. So he said, teacher, it is good for us that we stay here and we make three temples, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But then look what the scripture says next. He did not know what he was saying. He didn't know what he was saying. And he's saying these things. A cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were afraid when they saw Moses and Elijah enter into the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, the beloved. Hear him. You see the instructions? See, they were afraid. When they saw the cloud overshadow them, they became afraid. And then the voice came out of the cloud and said, this is my son. This is y'all speaking from the cloud. This is my son, the beloved. And then he says, hear him, meaning this is who you need to listen to. And so what is Peter saying? Because remember, Peter was sleeping, barely awake. And the scripture says in verse 33 that Peter did not know what he was saying. And so the gist here is there is a time to sleep, but we're told to pray without ceasing because many times we're sleeping at times when we should be praying, and therefore we miss the appointed time. And so because many of us don't have a prayer life, we did a lesson previously on um, the secret place of Yah, please go back and check that out because it changed me, okay? But because many of us don't have a prayer life, we don't know how to move according to the Spirit. And because we aren't being led by the Spirit of Yah, we don't know what the will of Yah is. And because we don't know what the will of Yah is, we go on our own will. And so for many of us, we just want to talk, okay? We want to talk. Yah said this, and Yah said this, and the Spirit said that. When in essence, Yah hasn't said anything, okay? And when you're not hearing from Yah, then it is that it, that's when it becomes that that's that's the time when you begin to lead others into destruction. I remember having a dream, and I think I talked about this on um, a while ago, where someone was supposed to, in this dream. It was the 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 scene in the dream was historic, almost like in ancient biblical times. And there was someone who was so-called a leader. He was leading people. And I knew in the dream that he was leading people astray. 
and he was telling them what to do, and they were following him. And he was pretending like he was hearing from them and, and leading them, but he wasn't. And and I knew that it wasn't the way to go. And so when you do not have a prayer life, you are not in communion with the Father. You don't enter into the secret place. You don't enter into his presence. You know, you're, how do we know if who who it is that you're actually hearing from? Okay, who are you getting your instruction from? Because when you're not hearing from Yah, like I said, this is when you lead others into destruction. Okay, and as we can clearly see here with the words that Peter spoke, because clearly um, this was not the will of Yah. Okay, it was not Yah's will that Peter build our Messiah a temple likened to that which is built by what? The hands of men. Okay, and so Hebrews 9 tells us that our Messiah came as a high priest of the good things that are to come through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, okay, but that which is not of this creation. And so, again, that's why before, before Yeshua went to accomplish what he was sent to do, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray before the Father Yah to seek his will. This was before. I'm making an emphasis. Before Yeshua went to accomplish what he was sent to do, what he came here to do, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Go to Luke 22. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray before the Father Yah to seek his will. So we're going to read Luke 22, verses 39 through 45. Luke 22, 39 through 45. And going out according to his custom, Yeshua went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And having come on the place, Yeshua said to them, Pray that you do not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. So basically, as far as you could throw a stone, that's about as far as he was from his disciples. And having... Uh, placed, you know, on the knees, okay, he's on his knees and he's praying, okay, saying what? Father, if you are willing, this is what Yeshua is saying to the Father, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. He says, but if it is not your will, but your, it is not my will, but your will be done. So Yeshua right now, he's praying to the Father, look, When he's saying take this cup from me, he's like, if I don't have to go through this, if I don't have to go and die, if I don't have to go and crucify, I I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but if I don't have to do this, take it from me. But then he said, but yet not my will, but your will be done. And it says after that, that the cherubs, the angels from heaven appeared to Yeshua and strengthened him. Okay, well, how did they strengthen? We did a teaching on that before. They strengthened him with the word. He was being strengthened with the word over and over and over and over. The scriptures speak of this. And so it says in verse 44, and being in agony, I mean, he was in distress. He was in grief, great grief. It says that Yeshua prayed more earnestly, more intently. And it says that his sweat became as drops of blood falling onto the earth or falling onto the ground. So he had some heavy grief of what he had to go and do, okay? It says that he was sweating so much that his sweat were as if they were drops of blood falling down on the ground. And then rising up from prayer, coming to his disciples, Yeshua found them what? Yeshua found them sleeping, exhausted from grief. Now, the Blue Letter Bible says when it says that they were sleeping, it says to me mean, it means to slumber. Okay? Figuratively um to be deceased or to be dead. Okay? And so what does this mean? Were the were the disciples physically dead? No. But but they're resting. They're sleeping at that very moment when they should have been praying signifies a spiritual death because we we 
we we we build and we strengthen and we feed our spirit man when we're in constant prayer and when we're fasting and when we're seeking the Father's face, okay? This is when we're we're feeding our spirit man, when we're in that secret place, when we're constantly in his presence and through reading. But if you're reading and you're not praying, you're not in the secret place, okay? And so we strengthen our spirit man when we're praying. That's why he says pray without ceasing. And so this is why Yeshua reiterated what he told them in the beginning in verse 40 when he said, pray that you do not enter into temptation. Because when we fall under temptation, this is when we're led to do things that draw us into sin against Yah, okay, and against the will of Yah. Because when we're under temptation like Eve, okay, we are no longer listening to or being led by our father, Yah, but at this instance, now we're being led by Satan. That is who we are listening to. So because Yah does not tempt, the scripture says that he tests, but he does not tempt. You are only tempted when you are drawn away by your own lust. So that's why we pray that he lead us not into trial, okay, because the prayer when people have said or oh, lead us not into temptation, that's wrong. He does not tempt us. He does not tempt us. We are tested, but we're not um, tempted by Yah. It's only Satan that tempts us, okay? Because even Yeshua, he tried to tempt Yeshua by offering him all the kingdoms of the earth. If he will do what? Bow down and worship him, okay? And so... They they ignored the very first command that he gave to them. Look at verse 46. And Yeshua said to them, why do you sleep? Why are you sleep? Why are you slumbering? At this very moment, I told you to pray. That's what I told you all to do. Pray that you don't enter into temptation, into, into temptation. And instead of you praying, you over here sleeping. He, he, and so while putting this teaching together, I found out that Gethsemane, I've had an experience with that and I shared it before, and maybe I will if I have, depending on how much time I have today with my story with Gethsemane. Um, but just while I was putting this teaching together, I found out that Gethsemane means pressed oil, okay, pressed oil. And so when you realize that, the crushing, how do we get olive oil? It is the crushing, okay, that brings out the true value and the true worth of an olive, okay? You start with the olive. The crushing of the olive, okay, brings out the true value and the worth of it. This is how you get the olive oil when it's crushed. You When, when you, you don't get wine or grape wine, without crushing what? The grapes, okay? And so I'm saying all this is to say, if you haven't figured it out, despite what most think or have been taught in this society, humility, and I put a post up about this um, earlier today, humility is measured or humility is determined through subtraction, not addition. Humility is measured or humility is determined through subtraction, not addition, okay? And so because so many times we we find ourselves um, taking, 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 you know, um, we, we are not a society that likes to pour into other people. And sometimes we can be very draining and not even know it. And so I asked the question today, who have you poured into today? Okay? So Yeshua went to the Father. Again, just going back, because I can get off sometimes. Yeshua went to the Father to pray. Okay? Because he went to seek his will. He went to seek his will. And so because he did this, because he went to the Father 
to pray and to seek his will, when the guards came to arrest him, he was ready. Okay? He was ready and he was prepared for what was to come because, again, he had already been in heavy prayer. He had already been in communion with the Father. He had tarried our night. And so, again, because he had prayed and because he understood exactly what he had to do in that moment, he was ready. But Peter, on the other hand, he fell asleep in that moment of prayer. He fell asleep, okay? And so because Peter fell asleep and because he didn't know or understand what the will of the Father was as it pertains to what the Messiah had to do, he wasn't being led by the Spirit of Yah. And so what did he do when the man came to arrest Yeshua? What did he do? He cut the ear off of the guard, right? And that was because instead of being led by the spirit of Yah, he was being led by his flesh, okay? That's why Yeshua said those who live by the sword die by the sword. And so when we're so when we're being led by our flesh, no matter how much we think we're moving according to the will of Yah, we're not. We're only moving according to self-will, not Yah will. That's why Yeshua prayed, um, not if you can take this cup, please take it away, but yet it is... Not my will, but your will that needs to be done. What is your will? And once he found out what his will was, when they came, he did. there was no resistance. He did not fight because he had already been in communion with the Father. He had already been in prayer with the Father. He already had received instruction and was being led by the Spirit. So there is no resistance when you already know what the will of the Father is. If I'm making myself clear, but this only is, happens when you're in commune with the Father, when you're in prayer with the Father, when you're reading, when you're fasting prayer, that you're seeking his face, that you have removed the distractions so that you can hear him and know what his will is. Go to, I want to go to the precept for, um, I want to go, go to Haggai, the prophet Haggai. Chapter 2, we're going to read verses 20 through 23. Haggai, chapter 2, 20 through 23. And the second time the word of Yah was to Haggai in the 24th of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overturn overturn the throne of the kingdom and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations and I will overturn the chariots and their riders and the horses and their riders will come down. Each one of the sword of his brother in that day says, Job hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, the servant, the son of Shittel, says Yah, and will make you a signet for I have chosen you, declares Yah of hosts. And so a signet is like a ring, okay, that pretty much seals a document or a signet seals a covenant. And so as it is being used in this context, he is, God is pretty much telling him that uh, this is going to be a covenant sign of his lasting promise that one day he is going to bring back the king of Israel, okay, he and we know who this is talking about, our Mashiach. So this is a prophecy. Yah is saying, I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. And the blue letter Bible for shake in the context that it is being used in Haggai chapter two, verse twenty one, it says to tremble, to move, to make afraid, to remove, to quake, particularly through fear. And the source dot com says to shake means to disturb to upset, to alarm, to stir up, to set in motion. So there is some there are some things as he spoke to the prophet Haggai then and as and as it will be coming soon as and what is going on right now. Yah is going to disturb, he is going to upset, he is going to stir up and he is going to set in motion the shaking of the heavens and the motions and and, and the earth. And this is going to cause people to be afraid. People are going to be removed, okay? When the, his four sword judgments, and we talked about this as a lesson, go back and let, check out our 
are, are teaching on the four sword judgment. When his four sword judgments come, people will be removed. Okay, people will be moved through fear. And so, what is this shaking all about that Yah Himself promises to the prophet Haggai? Go to Hebrews chapter twelve because it explains it even better. Go to Hebrews 12, and we're going to read verses 25 through 29. Haggai chapter 12, verses 25 through 29. Watch that you do not refuse the one speaking. This is talking about Yeshua, okay? Watch that you do not refuse the one speaking. For for if these did not escape, who refused him, who divinely warned them on earth, how much more shall we not if we refuse to hear him who speaks with us from heaven, whose voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying what? Yet once, once again, yet once more. Some of your scriptures may say yes, uh, yet once again, yet once more. He says, I will not only shake the earth, but also the heavens. Now the words yet once makes clear the removal of also the heavens. Oh, no, let me read this again. Now the words yet once makes clear the removal of the things being shaken as having been made so that the things not being shaken may be remain. For this reason, Receiving an unshakable kingdom, let us have grace by which we may serve Yah pleasingly with reverence and with awe, for also our Elohim is a consuming fire. So he's saying here, and just in Hebrews 12, it is validating what the prophet Haggai said, that he will once again do what he did before, that he is going to not only shake the earth, but he is also going to shake the heavens. And it says that the words, yet once again or yet once more, he said this makes it clear that there will be a removal of something that is being shaken so that that which is not being shaken will remain. According to the Blue Letter Bible, shake in this context as being used in Hebrew 12 means to agitate in any direction, to cause to tremble. It says figuratively to throw into a tremor of fear or concern. It says metaphorically to agitate the mind, which not only means to to physically shake the mind, but also to trouble the mind. And according to thesaurus.com, it also means to concuss. Which, which, where you get the word concussion, which means to interfere, to meddle, and to have an effect. And so Yah said that I am going to interfere, I'm going to meddle, I am going to have an effect, okay? I'm going to cause a troubling of the mind. This is, is something as that was um, said as part of the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Okay, with our people. And so the shaking up is necessary. And we're going to talk about why is he going to shake things up? Why is he going to cause a great tremble? Uh, Why is he going to trouble the minds of people? Why is he going to interfere? Okay, why is he doing this? Why is he going to do this? Well, just look outside. Look at what's going on right now. Okay, look what we're what what we're seeing in history right now and in light of this government shutdown and all of the chaos that has surrounded it, what we're seeing right now is the removal of those things that do not align with the kingdom of Yah. Remember to shake means to remove. Okay, he is gonna cause a tremble. He's gonna cause fear or concern. He's going to call a troubling of the mind. How many people minds and hearts were troubled? How many people were fear wondering, am I going to get my social security check? Am I going to get my tax refund? Am I going to not next month have my food food stamp benefits? How am I going to feed my family? What about all the workers that have been on furlough, been out of pay for a whole month? 
That is a shaking that is going on. Okay? Yah is remove getting ready to remove these things that do not allow do not uh, that does not align with the kingdom. I'm not talking about helping people in need. But when things shake, what happens when things shake? When things shake, they move. When things shake, they fall down. When things shake, they are destroyed, depending on how hard it is shaken. Okay? And excuse my French when I say this, but America went to hell a long time ago. Okay? And today we're only reaping what we have sown because we claim that we stood on the foundations of the word of Yah. We claim that we were one nation under God, but we have turned away from Yah. We have turned to the God of this world. We have become a tolerant, loving society. We tolerate homosexuality. We tolerate fornication and sexual perversion in the church. We tolerate wolves teaching and influencing the sheep. We are lovers of money more than lovers of Yah. We have kicked Yah out of our public schools. We no longer allow prayer. We have removed the Ten Commandments out of our public buildings. We clap for sinners. We praise the wicked, and then we openly reject the word of Yah and then turn around and say, God bless America. Really? Yah has turned his face away from us, and we're seeing it now, okay, by the things that he's getting ready to allow to happen. And unfortunately, we're getting ready to pay for it because judgment is coming. That's why he says, for this people's heart is waxed cold their ears are dull of hearing their eyes have closed they're blind that's what he's talking about and less what at any time they should see with their eyes hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be what converted and then i will heal them this is why Yah says that he will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. He said, I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Yah is trying to get our attention. This government shut down. I, I, I can imagine how many people probably haven't prayed in years, probably got down on their knees and prayed. Yah is telling us to stop. Turn around because you're going in the wrong direction. You're going away from me. He's trying to get our attention. He wants us to repent. He wants us to come running back to him so that he can forgive us and to restore us. That's why he sent his son for us. That's why he's shaking us right now. He's trying to get us to let go of everything and Anyone, anything that we're holding on, every form of idolatry, every idea that we may have, every philosophy, every religious belief that is contrary to his word, every political belief, every material possession, whatever it is that we're holding on to, he wants us to let it all go. You can, Unless you shake something off of you, you're not going to be able to get it off of you. Sometimes it's necessary for you to shake something. And so in light of what we are talking about, and as it pertains to the shaking that must happen, I want to take us to a precept. And this precept, I'm praying that it will bring understanding why this shaking that's going on is an absolute necessity, okay, in order to bring about a change in order to bring about the righteous will of Yah, okay? Because, again, nothing happens without his approval. Satan cannot do anything unless he get permission. He couldn't mess with Job unless he got permission. He said, look, I can't touch him because you got a hedge of protection around him. Remove the hedge and watch he curse you to your face. But Job didn't do that. Go to Acts chapter 4. Go to Acts chapter 4. We're going to read verses 24 through 31. Acts chapter 4, verses 24 through 31. 
And hearing they were with one passion, lifted their voice to Yah and said, You are the Elohim who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all things in them, who through the mouth of your servant David said, Why do the nations rage and the people plan worthless things? The kings of the earth have risen. And rulers have deliberated one against uh, have deliberated as one against Yah and against his Messiah. For truly, both Hurrah and Pontius Pilate, with the nations and the people of Israel, were assembled against your uh, set apart son Yeshua, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your counsel before. Do you see that? Before determined to be done. Let's read this again. Verse 27, for truly both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the nations and the people of Israel, okay, because our people were responsible for it too, were assembled against your set-apart son, Yeshua, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your counsel before determined to be done. So this was determined. Remember, Yeshua was praying and seeking the Father's faith before this went down. If Take this cup away from me if, if I don't have to, but if not, not my will, your will be done. Once he found out what the will was, when they came to arrest him, he didn't, there was no resistance, there was no fighting because he already knew what Yah's will was. Okay, sometimes your will, his will is going to be that you go through. Sometimes his will is going to be that you suffer. Sometimes his will is going to be you not going to escape. And so it was his will. It said it pleased him that he to bruise his son. It pleased him because he knew that it wasn't about the pain that he was going to be Afflict that that he was going to have to suffer and be afflicted upon him at that time, but it was the greater of what was going to happen after he was risen from the dead after three days and three nights. This is what this was about: victory over death, a new order after the order of Melchizedek, both priest, priest and king. And so, verse twenty-eight tells you that they could not do anything to Yeshua be, be, without Yah's consent because it says they that he was anointed. It was anoint, He was anointed, and this was appointed for them to do whatever his hand and whatever counsel that he had predetermined to be done to him. So it was his will. If he didn't know, what if he then wasn't being led by the spirit of Yah? What if he, what if Yeshua would have been like Peter, operating according to the flesh? Uh, I, he wouldn't have went. We wouldn't even be here. He wouldn't have went. He'd have said, oh, I'm not, I didn't do anything. I've been serving you since I've been here. I have not seen, I, why do I got to go? I'm not getting ready to go. Can you imagine that? If he did not, if he was being led by his flesh, thinking about the pain he was going to be in, thinking about the suffering. Don't think he wasn't because he was, it says that he was grieved to the point that his sweat that dropped, dropped as if it was blood, as if it was blood falling to the ground. So he was very grieved at what was taking, was what he knew was he was going to have to go through. It didn't say that he was happy and he had a smile on his face that he was getting ready to go do this. No, he said, "Look, if take this away if you ha- if you can, but if not, you, hey, your will be done, not mine, but yours. If this is your will." So he didn't fight him. Only Peter, because first of all, he didn't he he didn't do what he was supposed to do. He was sleeping during that point in time instead of praying. So when they came to get the Messiah. What did he do? Cut the man's ear off. That wasn't his will. It was his will for him to be carried off because he has he had a job to do. And he knew that if he did do it, we wouldn't be here. Let's look at verse 29. And even now, Yah, look and see their threats and give to your servants that they 
be boldly preaching your word. See this, boldly. He says, and even now, y'all, look and see their threats. And give to your servants that they may be that they may uh that they be boldly preaching your word while you extend your hand for healings and mighty works and signs to be in the name of your son, the set apart one Yeshua. And they have prayed the place in which they were gathered were what? Shaken. As they were praying, it says the place in which they gathered was shaky. And they were doing what? Filled with the set-apart spirit. And they spoke the word of Yahweh with boldness. So this is what we need to be praying in these end times, that we would not waver, that we would not falter, that we would not allow the spirit of fear to rise up in us that will prevent us from doing whatever it is his will. We're going to read a very powerful scripture later on as it pertains to this. Because today's teaching is we we you need to know what it is that you need to be doing during this time because it's coming. Okay, that was just the test the test run to see how the world was gonna how this nation was gonna act when they kind of took it away. But he allowed it. Okay, we we are going to be in the times as our forefathers and as the disciples where they're on the run. They're being threatened. You're going to be brought before kings. You're going to be thrown in jail. You're going to be killed, some of you. You're going to be on the run. That's why he said, pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath and that you're not with child during that time. Okay? And so as they pray, it says that they were when they where they were gathered, they were filled with the set apart spirit that where the place where they gathered, it was shaken. But it says they began to speak the word of Yah with boldness, not with fear. And that's the reason why we're doing this lesson. Okay? Because I know some of these Israelites getting ready to start telling people where they need to go flee. They're, as I stated before, they're getting ready to do the Peter. Why they sleeping? And and not in the secret place and not in prayer. They worried about their beard. They worried about their Mitri and what color Hebrew belt they gonna put on. They not hearing from the Father. They listening to Satan telling them where to run. That's why it says the scripture said when they tell you here, come over here, he said, Don't listen. That's stop following them. They gonna be the one telling you where to go. And, and set you up for a trap, just like these agents that they got hired. That was all that I read the other day up on the Capitol with with um, axes and going around um, teaching hate speech all up on the Capitol during the time of this this shutdown. Again, they're nothing but agents being paid to to taint the faith, to make people think this is a cult. We are living in a time where all that we thought as strong and stable and dependent and all that we thought as being permanent, Yah is showing us now that it's getting ready to be removed. Okay, just as the guy said in the clip, everything you thought how long that those governments, food stamps, is not getting ready to last, all of this stuff that we have depended on Babylon for, it's, this stuff is not getting ready. All this stuff we thought that was the immovable, dependable, permanent, y'all is showing us it's getting ready to be removed and it's getting ready to be overthrown because we are dabs right smack in the middle of the shaking that's going on in Mystery Babylon, okay? And so it's being done through an end time pharaoh. Okay, and so with this shaking, when this shaking happens, okay, and it's and it's happening right now, we should expect that there's going to be confusion. Okay, there's going to be chaos. There's going to be confusion, but the confusion is going to be coming from those who do not know him. Okay, those who know him, we should expect. You know um, what's happening. We shouldn't be surprised. Okay. We should be expecting, because we know what Yeshua has said in his word. We know what the word has said. We should be expecting the economic security that we have had here in Babylon to be removed. Okay? 
Same thing with Israel. When it was time for them to go, their economic security was removed. When when y'all was shaking up Egypt before, <laughs> and they was on the run from Pharaoh, on the run while they pursuing after them with their men and their chariots, their economic security, once they got out of there, and y'all brought them out with a mighty hand, and they're in the wilderness. Oh, if we was been in Egypt. Oh, in Egypt, we had me. We had this. Blah, blah, blah. You, they still worried about what they had in Babylon. They still worried about what they had in Egypt. They're not even thinking about where Yah is trying. He, he had to remove the old and shake up that so that that which is not shakeable where he was trying to take them to the promised land. But they still, like Lot, looking back to what was before. They couldn't get, they couldn't keep their mind on Yah. Okay? He had to remove the old so that which is not shakable could not be removed. Okay? And this is what's going on. This is what is going on now. This is the reason why he's allowing it. Okay? This is the reason why he's allowing it. And it is now time that we begin to depend and put our trust in Yah if we haven't been doing so because we are seeing right now in this very moment, again, that all that people thought as permanent is getting ready to be removed. They, they, they what they, right now is temporarily restored. Okay, like I said, that was a test run. Okay, but our, our water, look at this thing. Our water is being poisoned. Our skies are darkened with chemtrails. Our food, every five seconds is being recalled. You know, something's not safe. This not a safe. You know. Our so-called science and technology has not been a benefactor that we thought that it would be, but instead it has brought us with the ills, all kind of ills. We, You know, the ills and the sicknesses, like I was reading something, and now I don't have my cell phone next to me because I used to have a flip phone, but I have an Android now. But I don't keep it next to me anymore because I'm saying it was talking about the radiation. And I noticed that with a plant that I had in my room. This plant has been with me for years. When I had um, was had this uh, a, a phone, in, a, a new phone in my room, noticed that this phone and the equipment that came with it, it killed my plant. Within days, I noticed my plant just started dying. And at first, I'm like, what is going on? And then notice, I'm like, this is the radiation killing the plant. So, again, this so-called technology, this so-called science, this has not been a benefactor that we thought it would be. Okay, it's threatening our very existence. And so many people, what they thought was going to be a blessing to us has also, it's been a blessing, but it's also been a curse. Okay, we have exchanged convenience for sickness. Everybody want to go around and get the smart TVs. Those things ain't doing nothing but uh, uh, spying on you in your house, recording everything you're saying as if they're not already doing that already. And so the things that we once thought was steady and the things that we thought were steadfast and the things that we once thought were immovable and permanent, the very word of Yah is proving right now that he and his word, only he and his word, Yeshua, is the only thing that is sure. That's the only thing that is sure. And so as we were reading with the prophet Haggai, and as we read in Hebrews 12, his coming kingdom, his coming kingdom is the only thing that will stand. His coming kingdom cannot be moved and will not be shaken. And so he has to remove this kingdom so that the new coming kingdom can remain. And so just look at the church. Okay, look at the so-called church, especially the so-called chosen people of Yah. Look at look at how wicked this nation is, this world. Just look at how wicked it is. And you wonder why Yah. Do you really need to wonder when you really sit back and ponder on everything that I said today, how wicked we are? 
Do you really need to ponder why Yah needs to shake up this earth? Look at the widespread acceptance of sexual immorality and the things that are being put before the very eyes of our children. Look at the sexual explicitness that we could have never dreamt or imagine of being put on television years ago and now is just on is being displayed on television as if it's if it's normal. People of the same sex get married. Pretty much pornography on television in broad daylight. Katy Perry singing a song talking about I kissed the girl and I liked it. Kids singing it. Look at the rise of the occult. The return to witchcraft, black arts, the worship of demons in broad daylight. Brought that Baphomet statue here as one of the places. And and going on a tour (laughs) with Goat Lucy, the Baphomet, all over the place (laughs) for, for people to come and worship. The worship of Satan in broad daylight. This is where we are. Look at the open and acknowledged worship of demons that is evident in the very people that we call celebrities, the people that we call entertainers. Jay-Z, Beyonce, Rihanna, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. You know, and for some of us, you know, for any of us that may have any type of morals or morality, look at the so-called church and the so-called church leaders that are parading themselves, going right along with the standards of the world, allowing the world to be the measuring stick of what should be taking place in the church and within the body of our Messiah. Just shameful what I see going on today. It's a it's a shame. Like I I get grieved in my spirit. Because I'm like, there's no fear of Yah today. Like, it's a difference when you out in the world and you're doing this. But when you claim that you are a part of the body of the Messiah, you got Yah's word and you are distorting his word for gain, compromising, being deceitful and, and using trickery and deceit to teach Yah's word to get money out of people. That's why he's taking these pastors out. He's going to close up the mouth of these false prophets. He's shaking things up. And from unfortunately, many of our family and friends whom we hold dear to our hearts, y'all will be calling for his remnant to remove ourselves from them too before he ends up removing us. I can go on and on and on about the wickedness that is going on in this world. There's not enough hours in the day to talk about it. The strange religions, the bizarre practices, Satan trying to deceive people into believing, exercising like yoga, Pilates, martial arts, meditation, all of these things people think is exercise. Yoga and Pilates and martial arts and and meditating, all of this stuff is demonic. They calling it exercise. So you can be sitting up with your feet like the Baphomet and with the triangle and sitting up Praising God, making the, the six the, the six finger with your hands. Do you realize that we are living in a time where there is no other time in history where we have had so such a demonic presence as on and I'm talking about on every facet, like everywhere. You can't even barely everything from the symbols on the cups to things that you buy at the store. On the buildings, on the billboards, on television, in the music. I mean, we are living in a time where it has not been so much demonic presence and influence on every facet as it is today. I mean, it's like there has been some type of a removal of some type of guard or shield that once was over this nation and it seemed like somehow this guard this guard or shield that once prohibited or prevented this nation from being totally taken over by demonic forces it, it seemed like it's looking like he who was holding back is no longer holding back it's like he's shaking things up he's allowing people 
to destroy them own selves. Go ahead. You want to be wicked? Okay, I'm no longer holding back. I'm no longer getting ready to hold back these demons that I have been holding back. I'm no. I'm not going to prohibit. I'm not going to no longer prevent them. It seems like they are loose, wild, and on the loose. And it seems like everybody who's not serving y'all is under their spell. And so, as we read this word, as we, like, when we're reading Hebrews 12 and we're reading in Haggai chapter 2, the purpose was to encourage the body, okay? Yah is in control, as I said earlier. And I and I would talk to Prina about this one night when I was on my way to going to work out. Yah, he's not uninvolved in what's going on. He's not uninvolved, okay? But, again, we cannot allow this word to bring fear into our hearts where we become stagnant and we become like those who instead of doing what we should be doing right now in this appointed time, we are slumbering, okay? We're sleeping. When he said, look, pray that you don't fall into temptation. The purpose of today's lesson is to make you aware but also to be encouraged be encouraged because the mighty works of Yah is getting ready to take place again like it did in Egypt. Be encouraged because after we endure, we will receive a glorious reward, a crown. Be encouraged and count it all joy because we have the privilege to be persecuted for his name's sake. Remember, the disciples and those who were enduring with them, it says that they went out shouting that they could partake and suffer. On account of our Messiah. And I know this message, this is not something that many of us want to hear. This is not something that I even particularly wanted to teach but had to teach. Because this is going to be staring me right back in the face. It's going to be staring us all. We have to look to the examples of those in the scriptures that were left before us. And we need to prepare. We have to be prepared because only those that endure to the end will be saved. There is no I'm saved and I got saved when I was baptized when I was 12. No, you are being saved if you have repented of your sins and you are truly serving him and you are keeping his commandments. If you have not repented, you are not saved. What are you saved from? Are you still doing the same sins? To repent means to change your mind. And when you change your mind, you change the way you think. When you change the way you think, automatically you will behave and act differently. And so as we look ahead, let us not fear or become weary because this word that we are reading is to comfort us. The shaking that is coming, please know, as y'all told the prophet Haggai and as we read in um, Hebrews 12, that it is his doing. It is coming from the very hand of Yah. It's coming from Yah. It is Yah who is doing the shaking. He's making it clear. He's telling you, I'm the one that's doing the shaking, not Satan. So we can stop blaming Satan because he's only being used as an instrument that Yah is going to use to do his will. He's going to be used. He's just an instrument. He's in, and those, those that are being deceived and being led by Satan, they're doing so because that's that's what they want to do. And so he's, he's, he's doing this shaking because there is a very special purpose, and that purpose is described in Hebrews 12. Again, what do y'all, what do y'all say? Yet once more. This means, again, I'm going to do this again. He said he will allow the shaking to happen. And Hebrew, that's why I say Hebrew 12 goes into it a little bit further than Haggai chapter 2. In Hebrews 12, he's, Yah is telling you that I'm going to allow the shaking to happen so that that which cannot be shaken will come. He's talking about his kingdom. That's why he said your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He's talking about the coming kingdom. 
This has to be removed. In order for this to be removed, things can't remain the same. Things have to change. When things are shaken, what happens? Again, they're removed, they're moved, they fall down, and they are destroyed. And one of the most encouraging things that we can do while we endure is to meditate on what his word has said, what he has promised to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose because his word is true and he is faithful. So we can trust everything that he said. He will never fail us. Again, let's take comfort in the fact that one of the things that cannot be shaken is the sovereignty of Yah. The sovereignty of Yah cannot be shaken. And so having said that, in order to rebuild, what do you must do first? In order to be rebuild, you have to what? Tear down. What does the prefix re mean? It means again. In order to rebuild, you have to tear down. And this is the reason why the shaking up of this nation has to happen. Because our people have become too comfortable in Babylon, just like the gentleman said in the audio clip that we listened to at the beginning of this teaching. And so I'm going to switch gears for a moment because I'm going to bring Prina in. She's going to um, give us just a brief report on this government shutdown, who's being affected by it, just kind of update us on the changes that happened yesterday, even though, you know, because... If you can come in, if there's a government shutdown, almost everyone is affected by it. Look how many people have been affected by this government shutdown. I think they said something like uh, 800,000 people, almost a million people. Mm-hmm. Okay? And they, and they know this. They know this. But, again, what did I say earlier? They're trying, their plan is to prepare this country for the transition. So I'm going to allow you to go ahead and Prina, and then I'll finish. Okay, so um, as of um, yesterday, um, we know that uh, if some of you didn't hear on the news, um, President Donald Trump signed into um, a bill to reopen the government for three weeks, Um, but he's only giving them three weeks to come to a decision um, uh, for his, his wall to be built. And if they don't reach a decision by February the 15th, Mm -hmm. according to New York Times, then he has um, implied that he will declare either a national emergency Mm, and he will use military um, building um, funding to build the wall. So, again, Mm. you know, he endorsed a bill called, it's called a stopgap, and this allows um, the government to be reopened so that Mm -hmm. they can come to negotiate mm-hmm. um, on the uh, on the wall to be built. And so okay. if they do not reach anything by that time, mm-hmm. by February the 15th, then they will be, he will shut the government down again. Mm-hmm. Now, as we saw in the clip and, um, and also from um, sources such as Wikipedia, um, CNN, mm-hmm. Um, the federal government departments that's being impacted right now um, are the Department of Agriculture, mm-hmm. and that's where the USDA and the FDA um, uh, operate under this umbrella. And we know under the SDA, SNAP, or Supplemental Nutrition um, Assistance Program, known as Food Stamps or EDT, mm-hmm. as well as WIC, and also our reduced and free school lunches. Oh, lunches that too! Our, wow. Yes, that our kids receive. They um, are saying that while he opened it up for February, you know, up until the end, the February the fifteenth, there's no decision. Then in March, these funds um, may not be available. Or mm-hmm. you, you, and so we know that if these funds are not available, they're going to affect. Our poor people, as the man mm-hmm. said in the video, you know, you're not getting no food stamps and infants with formula and then school and reduced lunch. And um, with the F- Food and Drug Administration, they're not going to have many workers out. Uh, yeah, they go out fact, and, yes, and make sure food. that the foods okay, are safe yeah. and, mm-hmm. you know, with all these recalls and different mm-hmm. things going on. Also, with the Department of um, Housing and Urban Department, which is another um, department that is being affected. 
um, like we heard in the, the clip, Section 8 and um, and housing yeah, um, choice boxes. Mm-hmm. Yes. They help with the housing um, assistance. You know, we're going to see a lot of people come March that may be homeless. Mm. Um, so the rate of homelessness might go up uh, as a result of this as well. And then um, go moving on down to the Department of Treasures, which is the IRS. Now, this is not only affecting the tax returns, but it's also affecting the financial aid for those that are in college. Um, oh, for wow. Pell, for the Pell Grants because, you know, your tax returns and different things are a part of mm-hmm. your financial aid. So mm-hmm. they're saying that they're going to be slow on getting that out, or some people might not even be able to receive financial aid during that time because of the IRS. Classes, especially if you've got to graduate and stuff. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So that's affected. And then, you know, the Department of Transportation, which is the TSA and the roadways, uh, they, they are the ones that's responsible for the roadways and the airways. And, you know, I was watching on the news the other day that a lot of the workers are calling off. And so if you're Wouldn't going you? – yeah, Exactly. If I'm not getting paid, I'm going to take – well, you still not getting money <laughs> Day, but I'm gonna be out taking my sick day to look for another job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in light of this, they are saying that um, the traveling and and the security of people will be affected if you know um, if this continues uh, because you know the TSA are responsible for uh, making sure when you go to the airport and um, mm-hmm. that that you're not being carrying um, that one you're not a, ter- a, ter- a terrorist. And then you're, you know, uh, it's just the safety of of our our people. Um, And then um, another department is the Department of Interior, which that's what protects the natural resources, um, our natural parks and museums. Well, um, I was reading the article and looking at this, and this is, um, they were saying a lot of the national parks, such as uh, uh, Yosemite, which is in California, on mm-hmm. the Grand Canyon. like Yellowstone Park, those yeah, kind of parks, and they're taking care of animals and stuff like yes, that. Yes, those mm-hmm. are all being affected. Um, some of them is trash because they don't have the rangers and the workers out to clean up these parks. So now they're, you know, and some of these parks are, are, um, you know, protecting like rare trees that's no longer mm-hmm. uh, in existence, and so. <laughs> All it takes is trash and and not being taken care of for those things be destroyed. And then um, another department is the Department of State, and this department is responsible for you know our foreign policies and immigration, as well as visas. So those that are here with visas, if expiring, you know they, you know they're going to be out of luck as well. And then. Um, the eighth one is the Department of Commerce, and they are uh, responsible in promoting economic growth with the fair trade and U.S. Uh, exports and international trade. And we see that our market is declining um, just from this 35-day uh, shutdown, and uh, we are feeling effects of it. And also the Department of Justice, um, which is responsible for um, enforcing laws, um, public safety mm-hmm. against um, foreign and domestic threats and terrorism and um, preventing crime. So these are all the nine that is affected under the executive branch. <coughs> and the mm-hmm. executive branch is the ones that carry out the laws. Mm-hmm. This is the department that is being um, affected the most. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, um, these are basically going to affect mainly the minority and the poor. Of course, well, that's what they and they know that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Jacob's troubles. Yes, Jacob's troubles. This is Jacob's and I want to just uh, chime in on um, when you were doing. Uh, is it Hag 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 you was reading what now? I was reading Noah in Jash, Jasher six, chapter six. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it and Yah uh, was um, shaking up the earth during that time. Really? Uh, yes, in Jasher six, and I was like, uh, that brought <laughs> me to Jasher six, and so I'm gonna read it 
for a second, Joshua? Yeah, Post. please do. Verse 11, and it says, On that day, Yah caused the whole earth to shake, and the sun darkened, and the foundations of the world raged, mm. and the whole world was moved violently, and lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and all the fountains in the earth were broken up such as not known in the inhabitants before. And Yah did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men, that they might be no more evil upon the earth. And so if some of you know the story of of Noah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, he gave the people 120 days to repent, repent to turn mm -hmm. away, and they didn't. And as I was reading this story, when I saw that, and that when you talked about the shaking up and the destroying, like he did this, and and the you know the sons we know the sons of men never uh, mm -hmm. turned. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading this, I was shocked because I wasn't shocked, but I was in awe of how when Yah had Noah go into the ark because this gives a more um, fuller detail of what happened. The people came to the ark. Like, open it up. Like, tell them no to open it up. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, looking at how our people are now and, like, how Yah is telling us, you know, to return mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. As he, they, the scriptures say, as in the Bo day judgment of come. You know, and they were demanding and, 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 and um, him to open up the ark. And he wouldn't open it up. And, and he was, you know, just basically telling them that, um, Yah gave them a time mm -hmm. to turn away, and they chose not to. And so this is the calamity that had fell on them. Mm -hmm. And it was how they was violently trying to get in. The I can believe it. I can believe it. Just how they going to be um, when all this stuff go down, probably yes. trying to break in people's houses and stuff. Yes. And read yes. the reason again why he said he shook the earth again. Okay, and verse 11 um, let me go back up. Asher 6 and 11. Asher 6 and 11. And it says, on that day, Yah caused the whole earth to shake and the sun darkened and the foundations of the world raged and the whole earth was moved violently and the lightning flashed and the thunder roared and all the foundations in the earth were broken up, such as not known to the inhabitants before. And Yah did this mighty act in order to terrify, mm. to terrify the sons of men, that there might be no more evil upon the earth. See, didn't, didn't I? What did didn't I read you the strong, um, the um, the blue letter Bible for shaking? Yes. What it meant to terrify? <laughs> you yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. To, to trouble the mind. I mm -hmm. mean, this is what's going on because we don't we don't. And thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that. We don't uh, realize until it directly affects us. Just like the the guy said in the audio clip, until you put take food out of Jacob's mouth and uh, take the roof over their head, they not they don't hear you. You can talk about shrimp, pork, crab, and lobster is an abomination. You can tell them about the that the law is not done away with. You can tell they don't want to hear it. Tell them, then let them find out they ain't got no way to sleep. Let them find out that um, that they ain't got no way to feed their kids. Then they're going to be ready to listen. You know what I'm saying? He has to shake things up. And so earlier we read Haggai chapter 2, verses 20 through 23. Thank you, Prina. We're going to read... Um, Hebrews, uh, we're going to read Haggai. We're going back to Haggai chapter 2, but we're going to read verses 1 through 9. We read earlier, we read um, Haggai 2, verses 20 through 23. Now we're going to read Haggai 2, uh, verses 1 through 9, okay? Because all of these precepts go together, and, and along with what Prina said, that was wonderful how she brought that out, because it 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 shows how he... Then and now, what he had to do with the first earth, why he shook them at that time. You see how the spirit of Yah moves? I didn't know what she was reading. I didn't know what she was studying. She didn't know until today, this morning. She didn't know what I was going to have. Frida didn't know until she heard my lesson, what I was getting ready, what scriptures I was getting ready to read. So it was meant for her to read that. 
And so Haggai chapter 2, verses 1. In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of Yah was by Haggai the prophet saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this house in her former glory? And how do you see it now? When compared to it, is it not as nothing in your eyes? Like, did you see this? Look at what it was in, in the form of glory. Look at what the, how you think glorious bad mystery Babylon is, the mother of all harlots, and then revelations. Look how you how glory the for her former stuff will be when when Yah takes her down, when everyone is gonna be lamenting and mourning over the whore, okay, because she is no more. He says, "Look at look, is it not?" In your eyes, compared to be nothing, verse 4, yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says Yah, and be strong, Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, and do what? He says, be strong and work. All people of the land, says Yah, he says, for I am with you. Do you see this? He says, I am with you. Declares Yah of hosts with the word of by whom I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So he said, I'm with you. Who was with us when we came out of Egypt? Was it not Yeshua? If you don't know who Yeshua was before he came in the flesh, you need to go back and and um listen to our former teachings on who is Yeshua. Okay? Who he was before he actually came. He was there. He was the Malak. He was. He was. He's been here. Okay. He remember. He nothing is created. Nothing was done unless he did it. He says, "For I am with you," declares Job Host, with the word by whom I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit stands among you. Do not fear. So he said, "Look, I'm going to be with you. I'm getting ready to do some things." But just know, don't be afraid, I'm with you, and I'm standing among you. He says, my spirit is standing among you. He says, do not fear, for so says Yah of hosts, yet once, it is in a little while. He said, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and the desires of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says Yah of hosts. He says, silver is mine and gold is mine, says Yah of The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. So the house that he is getting ready to build is going to be greater than the former. We're in the former right now. We just don't even know it. Okay? And in this place, he said, I will give peace. We are getting ready to see Yah's hand again in the nations of the earth. He's getting ready to shake things up, just like he shook the heavens and the earth before when he destroyed those during the time of Noah. And so let us ponder for a moment on the trust. Let's ponder on the trust that many of us have put in the arms of men. You know, curse is anyone who puts their trust in the arm of men. Let's consider the confidence that many of you have in your elected officials that you have put in office. Many of you have more trust in them than you do in Yah. Let's think about it for a second. Because I don't know if you've been under a rock, okay, but I was reading an article yesterday from a man who, obviously he voted for Trump. Okay, and the article quoted this man is saying, and this was the heading of the article, I feel betrayed. And I wanted to laugh, but I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do it. But the man, uh, uh, this is someone who voted for Trump. And then I guess because he's affected by the government shutdown, he's like, I feel betrayed. Like, I voted for you. But, again, Cursed is he who puts their trust in the arm of men. You have confidence in your elected official, in your elected officials. And I'm not sure that, and I'm sure that this man, he's not the only one that feels this way. Meaning, 
feeling like his elected officials let him down. This is why you don't put your trust in the arms of men, but in Yah. And so as a nation, you know, it it seemed kind of, I don't even know the word that I want to use. I think for many people, you know, they looked at like justice has been lost, you know. And we, we see it not only with the removal of our constitutional rights, but also with the removal of the Ten Commandments, okay. They removed the Ten Commandments, but yet they want to erect a Baphomet statue in its place. The educational process is no longer educational, but it's a political programming, a, per, a political programming curriculum called, a.k.a. the Common Core, okay, and their, and their sole purpose is to push their agenda down the throats of our children. And I heard a saying, and I've heard this saying, you may have heard, but it says, he who shapes the mind of a child already has a world. They're not worried about us. And our old behinds and us adults, they worry. They want your children. They want the mind of your children. You know, so who, however it is you want, so is a man in his heart, so is he. Your heart is your mind. So we are not to put our trust in a democratic, and that's why we don't vote. I know people get mad. Oh, you know, I have people mad and I'm friending me because I didn't vote. Okay, bye. Because, you know, and getting in the fit over this, you don't have no understanding. I'm awake. I'm not um, plugged to the matrix. I've um, unplugged myself from the matrix. I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I got my they live glasses on. I can see what's really going on. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid, okay? And so we are not to put our trust in a Democratic or Republican Party system, okay? We are to put our trust in Yah, okay? Because Yah is allowing the nations to be shaken. He's allowing it. He's allowing the undergirding of this nation to take place so that men can begin to see that it is only in and through him that we have our being. Okay? And so only those who are committed and faithful to the sovereignty of Yah and willing and able to endure to the end will see the kingdom and prevail. And so in light of what is going on with this surreal and I call it surreal shutdown because it, it, it's real, it's really happening, but it's kind of surreal because, you, cause it, you know, I'm like, we're actually living in these times, you know. But in light of what's going on, the shutdown, we, we're seeing people panicking. We see the rise of confusion and, you know, but those who are in tune with Yah, we are not surprised and we are not taken by surprise with what is going on because we know what his word is said about the last days. We were warned. Yeshua told us what would happen in these end times, what events would take place prior to his return. They asked him. And so this shutdown, along with the rest of the plans that they have for us, they got more coming, okay? They're doing all of this in order to usher in this new beast system. So why are you worried about who pin, who R. Kelly pin on? They signing all kind of executive orders for you to be enslaved, and so we shouldn't be concerned about what's going on with R. Kelly. That is not going to save you. We need to be prepared for when our Messiah come back. That should be our focus. And as we get closer and closer to the fulfillment of what Yah is allowing to happen for his will and his purpose, we will find that we can, you, you can't continue to keep trusting this Babylonian system, especially Jacob's, the sons of Jacob's. We are going to find very soon that as the unraveling of this corrupt kingdom continues to shake even harder, 
we will find that many will begin to recall truth. <laughs> They're going to begin to recall truth. They're going to begin to recall righteousness. Many will begin to recall justice. It's funny how when someone takes food out of your mouth, a roof over your head, your ability to survive, you begin to recall the things that should have been the very foundation of your faith from the beginning. Oh, yeah, truth. Oh, yeah, righteousness. Oh, yeah, justice. You know, all of these things that we have long, long ago forsaken for the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And so no longer should we be emphasizing success according to the values of this world, worried about expensive cars, worried about big houses, worried about fancy name brand clothes. You know, no longer should we be emphasizing success according to the values of this world. No longer should we focus on the visible and the material values. But we should be focusing on the spiritual, those things that he says that Yeshua said that doesn't rot, like love, purity, justice. More importantly, you should be focusing and making sure that you and your family know and love Yah with all your soul, heart, and mind. It's time for us to return back to the family and begin to teach our children about the word of Yah, training them up. Like he said, how to live a set-apart, righteous lifestyle. Husband and wives, it's time for you to go back. We spoke about this last Sabbath on sexual immorality, talking about husband and wife, about the marriage bed being defiled. It's time that we return back to marriage as it originally was intended. And sex between a married man and a woman that is pure and holy before the eyes of our Abiyah. Because Satan, he has deceived even the chosen people of Yah. He has deceived them into into bringing defilement into the bedroom. These deceived them into doing things that our people once knew the difference between right and wrong. They knew at one time this was wrong. They was doing it, but they knew they wasn't supposed to be doing it. Say he has to see the people of Yah into believing their purity and righteous intimacy in a covenant marriage involves sodomy, which is oral and anal sex. He has deceived us into believing that purity and righteous intimacy in a covenant marriage involves sodomy. And and we think that it's okay, and then we can go around and quote the scripture and say the marriage bed is undefiled. Yeah, the marriage, being married alone doesn't defile the bed, doesn't defile the bed but if you committing oral and anal sex in the bed, now it's defiled, whether you married or not married. It's sodomy. He has deceived the people of Yah into exchanging pure, righteous intimacy for eating from places of waste. And I know that some of you don't want to hear what I'm saying because you love to do this. But I'm going to ask you one question. And and this is, it was brought to me. This was brought to me by the Center Park Spirit, and I, and I was in awe because I hadn't even thought of this. This is a question I'm going to ask you. This one was brought to my mind, and I had to write it down. Is the anus clean by nature? Is the vagina clean? Is the is the anus clean? Yes or no? No. Think about it. Come on. By nature, what do they both do? They both excrete waste. Okay. They both excrete waste and that which is toxic and unclean, bodily fluids, urine, okay, urine and 
feces. What does the Torah say? This is what came to my mind, and I was like, wow. When you think people call it going down, I'm being explicit right now, eating someone out, eating someone's behind out. (laughs) What does the Torah say about the unclean? This was was, uh, what was brought to me. What does the Torah say about the unclean? Are we allowed to eat? From that which is unclean, are we allowed to eat the unclean according to Torah? No. According to Torah, eating the unclean is what? An abomination, right? He says it over and over. You should not eat this because it's unclean. It is an abomination. So if we can, if Torah says we are not to eat the unclean because it's an abomination, then why would you think that y'all would allow us to eat from somebody's behind, to eat from someone's vagina, to uh, eat from places that he created to not only store waste but to excrete toxins when it is time to do so? It is there for a purpose, and I'm not, and we and he created pigs. Pigs are loving animals. He created shrimp, crab, and lobster. We're not saying that they're an abomination, but to eat them is an abomination. They are everything that he created is good, but it was good for the purpose in which it was created for. If you got down on your knees and pray and fast and pray and sought the Father's face concerning this, there's no way you gonna come back and say he told me that I can keep eating somebody's booty. He's not going to tell you I can go and put my waist down there where somebody just got finished peeing and a woman just got finished with her menstruation. He's not going to tell you that. And I'm splitting it this way so that you can actually see it for what it is and why you need to stop doing this whether you marry or not. It is sodomy. Look it up. And so because we know what Torah says about the unclean, and we cannot eat the unclean, and eating unclean foods and unclean things um, defiles us. It makes un- us unclean and that we're an abomination. When you're unclean in the scriptures, what will you do? You were cut off. You were separated and cut off from the rest of the camp. I just got finished having this lesson about this last week. So should we be eating or or eating from places away? Should we, shouldn't we be treating the acts of anal or oral sex as the same way we would we would treat if we the command when he tells us to abstain from eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster? Shouldn't we be doing that? This is what the Spirit brought to me. Because I wasn't even thinking this when it came to me. I'm like, wow, what an awesome way to present this so that people can see it. And so let me steer myself back because the point I was making was that Satan has deceived us into accepting right as wrong and wrong as right. And if you haven't realized it, our very own security in men and our very own security in this world, just with this brief government shutdown that may resume, like Prina said, in three weeks, Everyone is shaking because and even though it's been resumed, the shaking has not gone away. The terrifying has not gone away. You know why? Because people are still worried about, oh, am I only going to get a check? That's, the, that's, that's only three weeks. That's not even you getting two checks. That's just one. With four weeks in a month, that you worry, they worried like, dang, is this going to happen again? Yes. And don't let me even begin talking about the so-called church, because if you haven't figured it out by now, the church is not a building. It's the people of Yah. And if you're smart, you should be running and clutching your pearls, leaving those whorehouses now. Because the so-called church has failed the people of Yah. And that's why Yah is shaking up these false churches of Babylon and her false prophets, a.k.a. the, the self-righteous and greedy wolves, Calling themselves pastors, flocking, uh, teaching the flock of Yah. They're scattering the sheep. And so, for those of you who are calling yourself a true servant, it's time for us to begin to honor the second greatest command, and that is to love our brothers as ourselves. Because there is a lot 
of mess that goes on amongst the so-called brethren, especially those who are in Israel. I said this been plenty of times since the day I first came into true 14 years, 15 years ago. Now, I have I received more love when I was in a Christian church than I have amongst the so-called uh, is, is those who call themselves Israel, those awakened to the truth. I have never seen so much jealousy, envy, hatred, strife, just just horrible the way. Israel treat each other, and especially amongst the women. Horrible. You know, we do not honor the second greatest command, and that is to love our brother as ourselves. And so because sin does not merely consist of lasciviousness and murder and drunkenness and fornication, okay, but sin also consists of unforgiveness and pride, and bitterness, and envy, and jealousy, and strife too, a lot of which is prevalent and running rapid amongst the so-called chosen and awakened people of Yah. That's why Yah says, so as the man is in his heart, so is he. So I just had to throw that in there, because we think, oh, I'm not sinning because I'm not fornicating, I'm not committing adultery, I'm not doing, you know, I'm doing this, I'm keeping Torah, I'm keeping the Sabbath. But you have, you hate your brother in your heart. You walk in unforgiveness. You're jealous of your sister for no reason. I talk to Prina about this all the time. I feel like I get get it more than anybody. And Prina always have to bring me back to why it's happening, but it's hurtful at times because it seems like I try to pour into so many people, but it seems like I don't ever get it back. And not that I'm doing things to receive it, but it seems like, I, there's just a lot of hatred and animosity. I get a jealousy. I get a lot of that. And so getting back to our lesson, instead of blaming Trump and blaming what is happening in the earth today on Trump, just think back about 10 or 11 years. Who was elected? Okay. Who was elected 10 or 11 years ago? Okay. Who was responsible for the approval of same-sex marriages? Who legalized drug sorcery, a.k.a. marijuana? Who was responsible for allowing young girls to be able to abort their unborn babies without their parents' consent? Who was responsible for the approval of bestiality in the military and, and, the, and the removal of the don't ask, don't tell policy? Who spent all his time while in office fighting for the LGBT community? Who spent all this time fighting for their rights while the rights of the chosen people were being infringed upon daily, getting killed dead in the street, more under his leadership than anybody else, so-called black men? Who approved the anti-discrimination law while the so-called African-Americans were being discriminated against. All he was caring about is that the LGBT community wasn't being discriminated against. While the so-called African Americans was being discriminated against, we were getting beat, we were getting hung, we were we were dying at the hands of these cops. And none came to our aid. But again, that was part of the curses. Where was our anti discrimination laws? All of our people was caring about was the fact that he was black. nobody cared that he did nothing for our people and more of our people died under his leadership than any other president that was in the office. In April 2015, he signed and approved to ban conversion therapy. Conversion therapy is done to try and to persuade a person to change his or her sexual orientation. I'm going to read a quote from his administration. The Obama campaign responded to criticism in a press release saying, I strongly believe that African Americans and the LGBT community must stand together in the fight for equal rights. And so I strongly disagree with Reverend McClurkin's views and will continue to fight for these rights as the President of the United States to ensure that America is a country that spreads tolerance instead of division. For events held on Sunday, October 28, 2007, Obama added Reverend Andy Sinnon, an openly gay pastor. Who did this? <laughs> I can go on forever and ever. That's why he is getting ready to shake up this nation. You know, this this is what our nation has come to. Okay, we 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 and in seventy six other countries, 
homosexuality is it remains illegal. Okay? The United States is leading the world into sexual perversion, pornography, every act of impurity, every act of unrighteousness that your mind can ever imagine. She won't repent. And when I say she, I'm talking about the mother of horror, the mother of harlots. And just like in my dream, judgment is coming to her. This We have been warned over and over and over again. No matter how many warnings, no matter how many messages that's been sent, just like with Pharaoh, wouldn't repent, she won't repent. And so should not our Abba Yah come and visit such a place as this? We have forgotten. Our people, so-called African Americans, and those of you awakening, we have forgotten. Those of you who are trying to be like Peter, you coming to build. He didn't tell you to come over here to build. You're not being led by the spirit of Yah. Go flee. He didn't tell you to flee. He said, I scatter and I will regather. He didn't tell you to go flee over to Israel and go to Egypt and build a house. We have forgotten. That's why this shake-up needs to happen. We have forgotten that we are in Egypt. We are in Egypt again. He's, he told you he was going to send you to Egypt again in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, but by ships. We are in Egypt again. We've forgotten that. And if our people do not quickly repent of their wicked ways, they're going to be shaken and destroyed right along with the heathen. Because as I told you earlier, it is Yah who is doing the shaking. It is Yah who is doing the shaking so that he can bring about an end and remove what is so that that which is that cannot be shaken will come and will remain. I want to, um, because I'm almost done, I want to take you to a precept. Go to Jeremiah 14. We're going to read 17 through 22. Jeremiah 14, 17 through 22. And you shall speak this word to them. Let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and do not let them cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great break, with a very grievous blow. If I go out into the field, then I see those pierced with the sword. If I enter into the city, then, the, then behold, diseases of famine. Yes, both the prophet and the priest have gone around into a land that they do not know. Have you completely rejected Judah? Or has your soul hated Zion? Have you stricken us and no healing for us? So Jeremiah is crying out to Yah, have you completely rejected us? Do you hate us now? Do you Have you stricken us and we don't have no healing? He said, we waited for peace, but nothing good came. And for healing time, but behold, only thing that came was terror. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Yah, and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, do not spurn us. Do not dishonor the throne of your glory. Remember, and do not break your covenant with us. See, he, they, they, he know how to pray. Yah is a covenant-keeping Abba. Are there any among the vanities of the nations who make rain fall? Can the heavens give showers? Is it not you, O Yah or Elohim? He says, then we will wait on you. We're not going to go and build you no house. We're not getting ready to do nothing. We're going to be led by your spirit. He said, we're going to wait on you. Whatever your will is, we're going to wait. For you do all these things. You do all these things. Go to Jeremiah 15, 1 through 7. Jeremiah 15, 1 through 7. Then Yah said to me through Moses and Samuel stood before me, My soul could not be toward this people. Send them out from before my face. Yes, let them go out, and it will be, if they say to you, Where shall we go? Then you will tell them, So says Yah, those who are for death go to death, and those for the sword to the sword. And those for the famine to the famine, and those for the captivity to the captivity. And I will set over them four kinds, says Yah, the sword to kill, the dogs to drag off, the birds of the heavens, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. And I will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for what he did in Jerusalem. For who shall have pity on you, O Jerusalem? Or who shall weep over you? Or who shall turn aside to ask your welfare? You have forsaken me. 
says, Yah, you have forsaken me. You have gone backwards. This nation has forsaken Yah. This nation has gone backwards. He says, so I will stretch out my hand against you and destroy you. I am weary of repenting. He said, I'm tired of repenting. I'm tired of changing my mind about you. He said, I will shift them with a fork in the gates of the land. I will bereave. I will destroy my people for they do not turn from their ways. They won't repent. And so, again, Yah is in control. And when all of this goes down, it's going to go down. The shaking is going to go down to try us. It's going down to try many of us because, Yah, what do Yeshua say? He that endures to the what? The end, the same shall be saved. A lot of what's going on, he's going to allow to try some of us, just like he allowed with Job so that he can be tried. That's why Yeshua said that some of us will be tried and will be thrown into prison. Go to Revelation 13. I got a powerful scripture based off of what I just got finished reading in Jeremiah 15. If you notice what he said, those of you um, that are for death, go to death. Those who put a sword to the sword, for the famine to the famine, for the captivity, go for the captivity. Read Revelation 13. We're going to start with 9. I'm going to read 9 and 10. Revelation 13 and 9. If And I'm going to read different versions. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone gathers captivity into captivity, he goes. If anyone will kill by sword, by sword, he must be killed. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Notice what he says there. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The patience and the faith of the saints is fully trusting in Yah and not taking matters into your own hand. As everyone will do what? You're going to reap what you sow. That's why when Peter, when when Yeshua, remember, he prayed. He saw the face of Yah. He knew what the will was. That's why he didn't resist. He didn't fight. He could have done, he is the son of Yah. He could have removed himself from the situation. He didn't because he had already talked to his father. It was his will. So he didn't resist it. Peter was asleep at that point in time instead of praying, and he fell into temptation. So when they came to get Yeshua, he tried to cut the ear of the guard off. And Yeshua said, look, don't, don't do this because those who, you know, kill by the sword are going to die by the sword. Again, the patience and the faith of, this, of the saints, as being spoken of in Revelation 13 and 10, is trusting in Yah no matter what's going on and not taking matters into your own hand. That's why he said when they bring you before the kings and the magistrates, don't worry, don't fear them. Don't worry about what you're going to say. He said, I will give it to you at that time for what you need to say. So let me read this in other versions. If any, I'm going to read, I'm going to read this in um, three different, ver no, four different versions. If anyone is to be taken captive, into captivity he goes. <clears throat> if anyone is to be killed with a sword, with a sword he will be killed. This calls for the endurance and faithfulness from the saints. Here's the next version. Whoever is meant to be captured will surely be captured. Whoever is meant to be killed by the sword will surely be killed by the sword. This calls for the endurance and faith on the part of Yah's people. Whoever is meant to be captured is going to be captured. If, that is, if that's his will, that's what's going to happen to you. It was his will that Yeshua was captured. Do you understand? He says this, this calls for the endurance and the patience and, and faith on the part of Yah's people. That's why it, it, when, it, when he said whatever his will is, if you're supposed to be captured, then you're going to be captured. If you're supposed to be killed by the sword, then that's your will. That's his will. Then you go through. He says you have to endure. Stephen endured to the end. He went down, praising Yah. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He endured to the end. Whatever his will. I told you I keep having the same dreams, and I was, wasn't one of the ones. That's not the, I don't know if it's 100% or not, but it's, I'm not. 
If you are, another version says, if you are doomed to be captured, you will be captured. If you are doomed to be killed by a sword, you will be killed by a sword. This means Yah's people must learn to endure and be faithful. I love the way this reads. If this is what his will is, you this is what's going to happen. He said, this means Yah's people must learn to endure and be faithful. That's why the title of today's teaching is, The Shaking is Coming, Endure. It is based off of this scripture right here in Revelation chapter 13, 9 and 10. The last verse said, if anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he will go. If anyone kills with a sword, with a sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. You must persevere. You must endure to the end to be saved. If you try to save your life, he said you're going to end up losing it. But those who lose their life, meaning you're willing to go down, you're willing to keep preaching in that name that they tell you to stop preaching in like Paul and them. They were scores and beat, and they went out praising Yah, word glad. They were captured, but then they were let free. But that was his will. Some of you may be captured, and some of you may be let free. Some of you may not. Some of you may have to be killed. Some of you, we don't know. Some it's every time I'm being well, we don't know where you're gonna be at. Whatever his will is, that's why he look, if I don't have to, Father Yah, please keep me. But whatever your will is, then hey. That's why Yeshua said, Your will, not mine. Jeremiah, go to Jeremiah sixteen. And then I'm gonna be calling Prina in. Jeremiah sixteen, five through eleven. For so says Yah, do not enter into the house of mourning. When Yah says do not enter into the house of mourning, that means cut off all contact for these people. Because he said, I'm done with them. Jeremiah 16 and 5, so says Yah, do not enter into the house of mourning. Do not go to weep or moan for them, for I have removed my peace with loving kindness and compassion from this people, says Yah. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, nor shall men mourn for them, nor cut himself, nor shave himself bald for them. Nor shall anyone break bread for them in mourning to comfort him for ones who died. Nor shall they give to them the cup of comfort to drink from one's father or one's mother. Also, you shall not go into the house of feasting to sit with them to eat and drink. So says Yah of hosts. Um, the uh, Almighty One of Israel. Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place before your eyes and in your days the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. Do you see this? And it shall be when you declare to this people all these words, they will say to you, Why has Yah spoken all this great evil against us? See, they not, our people are not going to know why the, the shaking is happening. Many things are happening to us because we're not serving Yah. He's going to take the, he said, I'm going to take the joy and the laughter out of this place. Don't go comfort them when they loved ones die, when, they, when they're sick, when they, for mother and father is deaf. Don't, comf, don't comfort them because I have, I'm going to remove the, the, the joy, the, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness. I'm going to remove the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And when they ask, why is this happening? Why is y'all doing this? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against Yah Elohim? Then this is what y'all say in verse 11. You will say to them, because your fathers have forsaken me. Okay? Says Yah and have walked. You have, you, we forsaken him. We have forsaken him. And these times right now, if you're not serving Yah, I will be very afraid. Because Yah is saying, look, I, I'm, I'm asking for you to separate yourself from them. I'm asking for you. He is separating the reed from tares right now, and many of them will be in our very own family. He's asking for us to separate ourselves from the wicked and those that don't want to repent. If you don't want to repent, fine, okay, but I'm getting ready to remove myself from you. I can't keep holding on, oh, this my brother, oh, this my sister, oh, this my mother, oh, this my son, this my daughter, this my cat, this my mouse. He's not going to care. 
He's saying, I'm going to remove the laughter because they have forsaken me. Look, don't even enter into their house of mourning. That means cut off all contact, period. He says, I'm, look, don't even weep for them because he said, I'm getting ready. Look at verse, uh, verse five. He said, I'm removing my peace and loving kindness and compassion from this people. Yah is getting, he's starting to do this now. That's why he said, look, for those that don't want to repent, he said, when you have a calamity, he's going to laugh. When you have your calamity, he's going to laugh because you keep saying the law is done away with. You don't want to repent. He keeps sending his messengers to you to tell you to repent. They're coming to you in love and you rejecting the one. You don't want to listen to the one that he sent. You rejecting him. Don't expect anything good to happen. Don't expect joy. Don't expect peace. Don't expect loving kindness. Don't go. Don't get on your knees. You don't have no right to get on your knees and pray to Yah for anything that's going on in your life, and you are rejecting Him and you rejecting His word. Who is His salvation? You're sure that He said you have no right. I'm not going to keep sitting around praying for people that that don't want to repent, especially when you know. This last scripture, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, he says, set your way of life without money loving, being satisfied with the present things. For he has said, not at all will I leave you, not at all will I forsake you, never, so that they may boldly say, Yah is my helper and I will not be afraid, what shall man do to me? We are to set our way of life without the love of money. We have to be satisfied. That's what Paul said. What will take you away from the love of Yah? He said, I've been in need and want. I have been rich. I have had and I haven't had. What can take you away from the love? That's why he says, set your way of life without loving money. Judah testimony when the 12th patriarch, he told him that, that our your descendants is going to have a love for money. They're going to fall into the love of money, idolatry, and fornication. And that's what's going on with the so-called African Americans right now. Pretty, you can come in. Be not troubled, he says. Let not your heart be afraid, for I am with you. I'm in, sis. Yes. Praise be to God. That was awesome. If you don't mind, I just want to read um, Jasher. Uh, with Noah, the whole, uh, you know, just uh, a snippet of the account that happened when the earth destroyed um, is verses, uh, chapter 6, verses 8 through 26, if you don't mind, sis, if we have time. Okay. All right. Okay, so we know that um, Noah was given charge to build the ark because the earth was going to be destroyed, and within 120 years, Yah gave the sons of men to repent. So at this time, Noah is now being um, brought into the ark. So I'm starting at verse 8. And this is Joshua 6, uh, verses 8 through 26. And now uh, Noah brought into the ark from all living things that were upon the earth so that there were none left but no, but which Noah brought into the ark. Two and two came to Noah into the ark, but from the clean animals, and um, clean file. He brought seven couples Yah had commanded him. And all the animals and the beasts and the fowl were still there. And they surrounded the ark at every place. So the whole ark was surrounded by these animals. And the rain had not descended until seven days after. And on that day, Yah caused the whole earth to shake and the sun to darken and the foundations of the world raged. And the whole earth was moved violently. And the lightning flashed and the thunder roared and all the foundation in the earth were broken up, such as not known to the inhabitants before. And Yah did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men that they might be moved, that there might be no more evil, evil upon the earth. And still the son of men would not return from their evil ways. And they increased the anger of Yah at that time and did not direct their hearts to um to all this. And at the end of the seven days, in the six hundred year of the life of Noah, 
the waters of the flood came upon the earth, and all the foundations of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And Noah and his household and all the living things that were with him came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood, and Yah shut them in. And all the sons of the men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through the evil on the account of the rain. So they are counting the, 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 this evil in their eyes. Mm-hmm. For the water came more violently upon the earth, and the animals and the beasts were still surrounding the ark. And the sons of men assembled together. About 700,000 men and women came unto Noah to the ark. And they called to Noah, saying, Open, for that we may come in the in, in here in the ark. Wherefore uh, shall we die? And Noah with a loud voice answered them from the ark, saying, Have you not all rebelled against Yah and said he does not exist? Therefore, Yah brought upon you this evil to destroy and to cut you off from the face of the earth. Is it not this thing that I spoke to you 120 years back, and you would not hearken your voice to Yah? And now you deserve, and now, I mean, I'm sorry, and now you desire to live upon the earth? And they said to Noah, we are ready to return to Yah. (laughs) Open for us this we may live that we may live and not die. And Noah answered them, saying, Behold, now you see the trouble of your souls, and you wish to return to Yah. <laughs> Why did not you return during the during these um, hundred and twenty years, mm-hmm. which Yah granted you as a determined period, grace, the grace period? But mm-hmm. now you come and tell me this on the account of the troubles of your soul, Mm -hmm. now also Yah will not listen to you. Neither will he give ear to you on this day, so that you will not now exceed in your wishes. And the Mm -hmm. sons of men approached in order to break into the ark, to come in out of the count of the rain, for they could not bear the rain upon them. And Yah sent all the beasts and the animals that stood around the ark, those were the ones that were left that didn't get in. Mm-hmm. And the beast overpowered them and drove them from that place. And every mm-hmm. man went his way, and they scattered themselves from upon the face of the earth. And the rain was still descending upon the earth, and it, descend, and it descended 40 days and 40 nights. And the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth, and all the flesh that was upon the earth and, on, and in the waters died whether man, animal, beast, creeping things, or the birds of the air. And there only remain Noah and those that were with him in the ark. Well, yeah, that's, um, I love the books we read because you can find yes. out a little bit more. And yes. I mean, that, and I can see that being the case, like, right, yes. just you're trying to get in now, like, oh, I want to, like, that's that, that deathbed salvation. I want to say yes. a prayer so I can get in, like, no, no, no. Yes. No, no, yes. that's and not going to work on that. No, you have, he's giving you, you, your, once your grace runs out, it's yes. too late. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, that was powerful. I'm going to go back and read that again myself. Yes. Um, I was like, so much. I was like in awe of that, you know? like Especially like, when you read about the shaking and the reason why he did yes. the shaking was because their wickedness and, it, and yes. this is what's getting ready to happen again. I mean, what's something that kind of stood out to me a little bit with this teaching was when y'all, when I had got it, like it was dropped in my spirit, the dietary laws and what he said about the unclean. And not being able to uh, eat that which is unclean, but yet we think that we can um, indulge in unclean acts and eat and and put our mouth on things because that's what they call it, eating out. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm being explicit, but I'm just putting it out there. You know, know, eating from places uh, that's unclean. And so if if the dietary law said we're not supposed to do it and put our mouth on it, then what makes us think that we can do it? We can engage in those acts. Because I had not thought about attributing it to the same thing that he has said about eating that which is unclean. It's the same thing. You Mm -hmm. are not supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to do it. And just this, huh, I didn't hear you. No, I was just saying this lesson, you know, was very enlightening. 
um, just just all you know, just in its totality of being shaken and what Yah what Yah says He's going to do is going to happen. So you yeah, know, whatever His will is, like I was yes, reading Jeremiah, if yes, it's for you to go to captivity, then that's where you're going. Yes. If it's for you like to be struck by the sword, like but this is the patience and the endurance of the saint. Like this is what and you're going to have to I do. Also, um, scripture that you read that was mm-hmm. just like powerful but just hagar and the pray i mean you know all and jeremiah all of those just lined up you know mm-hmm. with this um and this teaching and you know i i just pray that this warning goes out and we we as a whole that's serving y'all take heed and like you said we need to start praying you know that uh uh to y'all and get in our secret place and and praying like how Yeshua did in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, and and not slumber because when we sleep and slumber and we don't pray as we ought to, we're not going to hear what Yah's will Mm-mm. is for us, and then we will repeat what you know. Um, you said Simon, right? Peter, Peter. yeah, Pine Simon. They call him Simon Peter, but it was Peter. Yeah. Yeah, what he yeah, did. I mean, he was talking about building, and I said that's the same thing Israel be talking yeah. about. All this, mm-hmm. like, you have you don't even know what he ain't sent us over here for that. And like, no. what are you like? A lot of people are following a lot of these groups, and they don't even know like who is it that you're listening to? Are they in Yah's face? Are they seeking His face? Are they being led by the Spirit? You know, why you running behind them? You better find out who they listening to. Because they're yeah. telling people to go over there into these other countries, and they're getting over there and getting out of over there and working as a slave. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to go ahead and end out. Um, if you have the, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm reading First Chronicles 29, um, verses 10 through 13 and 18. And David blessed Yah before the eyes of all the congregation. And David said, Blessed are you, O Yah, the power of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. To you, O Yah, be the greatness and the power and the high esteem and the victory and the majesty. For all in the heavens and the earth belongs to you. O Yah, yours is the kingdom, and you lift up yourself to all as heads. And the riches and the honor come before you, and you rule over all. And in your hand is power and might. And it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to you. To all, and now our power, we are giving thanks to you and giving praise to your high esteemed name, O oh, Yah, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers. Keep this forever for the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people, and prepare their heart toward you in Yeshua's name. So be it. In Yeshua's name, so be it. And so we thank you for joining us for this special edition teaching. Please, please share it because our people yeah. need to know in these end times what it is we need to do, how we need to prepare, what should be our primary focus, and how to avoid these these uh, traps that the enemy has set in every facet from religion, from entertainment, you know, from the school system. It's just all over and just not – um, being taken in by what's going to happen. Know that he is in control. He knows what he is allowing, and it's uh, and it's and again, this has to be shaken so that our coming kingdom can come. And it's not gonna when things are shaken, it doesn't feel good. It's yeah. not gonna feel good. It's it's gonna be uncomfortable for all of us. But in these times, things are gonna be taken away. When something is shaken, it's taken away. Something things are being removed. Things are being torn down. Things are being destroyed. And during that process, we have to make sure that our focus is on Yah and that we're putting our trust in Him and pray to Him. Whatever His will, we don't know. Sometimes His will is for us to, and just pray that we just do not uh, falter. And, yeah. you know, during this time and, and crumble and turn our backs on him during this time. And so we all need to be strengthened during this time. And so we thank you for joining us on today. May y'all bless and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and Yeshua's name. So be it. So be it. What if I told you that just about everything you were taught in school or church about history has been a lie? What if I told you that you are not a Gentile or a Hamite Egyptian or a Canaanite? 
And what if I told you that the very Bible that you read is talking about you and your ancestors? What if I told you that all the suffering our people has gone through for centuries is just a continuation of a divine punishment from God? And what if I told you that this punishment is otherwise known as the curses of Israel? And what if I told you that the people the world knows as Jews are not the real biblical Hebrew Israelites of the Bible? Would you believe me? From the very beginning, there has been a battle between good and evil, between the seed of Satan, the fallen angels who were deified by man, and the seed of Seth. But this battle was an eternal battle that will continue until the biblical end of days. This battle continued after the great flood with Noah, his three sons, and their seed, but in a different form. A form that the world would see as deception. But this was no ordinary deception, as this deception would be directed at one future seed, the seed of Jacob otherwise known as the children of Israel, from whom Christ the Mashiach came. The plan was perfect, that is, according to Satan's eyes, as the Israelites would be subjugated to these different forms of deception throughout the ages, during their different stages of captivity or exile into the nation. The deception would be so big, coming at the Israelites from so many angles, that it would cause them to break the covenant given to them from God directly to Moses. What happened next would continue for over 3,000 years, affecting one specific group of people.